Good afternoon, thanks for stopping by. Uh, look, today's video, or this weekend's video, uh, it's going to be a big one. Uh, so it might be a little bit long, and if it is, I apologise for that, but I'm going to want to try and cover off a whole bunch of stuff. What we're doing is, we're going to be putting some solar panels on the roof of the JCAT. I've been alluding to this one for a while. Finally, everything's uh, come together, and hopefully I've got everything that I need now to actually make this happen. I've got the solar panels, I've had those for a while. I've been out, I've got the aluminium, uh, the wiring is pretty much all done. Everything inside the caravan from a wiring perspective and the batteries is already done. We don't need to worry about that. The only thing we really need to do is get the panels mounted on the roof and that really for me is the biggest challenge. I've actually got a pop top roof and the outside of the pop top roof itself is aluminium but the actual roof panelling, uh, say for about this much on either, either side, is actually just a really light tin. Uh, now if I put any sort of decent weight on that, i.e. 220 you know, odd kilo solar panels, that's gonna put a lot of weight on that roof and frankly, I don't think it's gonna support it. And it's not meant to. I wanna raise the solar panels a little bit so they're not actually touching on the center of the roof for obvious reasons. So the idea, put some aluminum channel, which looks something like this. Just some square tube, 25 mil, so 25 mil square and it's actually a 1.6 mil thickness there as well. I did use the 1.2, which is the connected for building the camber in the back of the Pajero. So there's a link up there so you can see that video uh, and go and check that out if you're interested. Stock that I've got now is 1.6 versus the 1.2 wall thickness. Uh, I figured I could use the extra strength to support those solar panels. So I have two of these running down the side of the caravan. Um, that would give me my height so I can clear that tin roof. Obviously I don't want anything too high off the caravan roof. We are going to have some wind that's going to go underneath, so I'm going to have to be aware of that. Ultimately, where I'm going to start is I'm going to put the cross pieces onto the solar panels, get them up on the roof, see what sort of space we've got to work with, and then we'll go from there. Another decision I need to make is whether I want to use the uh, 235 watt solar panels or whether I want to stick with the 185s. Uh, there is a bit of a difference in the weight and obviously the 235s are bigger than the 185s. Looking at them now, you know, and there's not that much difference. For 100 watts between the two panels, that's a big improvement. I just really need to know what the weight is. I'm really concerned about weight. I have ordered some additional heavy duty struts uh, so I can replace those all around to account for the additional weight of the solar panels. Obviously, I've also got to consider that this is weight that's going to go in the caravan that means I can carry less stuff. Um, I don't tend to carry a lot of stuff in the caravan anyway, so. But you always go with the most you can fit on, don't you, really? I've got to tell you, I'm really perplexed whether I go with the 185s uh, or the 235s. So what we're going to do is get these solar panels mounted onto the actual cross beams uh, that are going to support them. And then we'll worry about getting the holes drilled into the roof and getting that all mounted. So it should be pretty straightforward. Fingers crossed. Got all the essentials. Got a glass of Pepsi. We've got our vape there, we've got our phone in case we need to call for an emergency. We've got the drone over here which is going to get us some footage of the roof as we progress. And then obviously we've got our amateur radio for a little bit of company and we can listen to what's going on out there on the repeater. Alright, let's get stuck into this. You can see I've been to Bunnings, I've got a whole bunch of bolts. Three packets, four packets in fact, uh, of 30mm M6s. These are going to go through the aluminium lengths uh, and these are going to be used to bolt the solar panels to those actual lengths. I've also got some spring washers as well, uh, so that's gonna make sure we keep the tension uh, on the bottom of the solar panels. Now I was actually considering screwing into these as an option, but I think I'm gonna go with the bolt and the split washers. Okay. Right, so I've just lifted that. They're 20 kilos a piece. Check these other ones out. I believe there's about 15. It does say 15 on the back. And that is pretty much uh, 15 bang on. There are just a smidge under, at least that one is as well. I gotta tell you, I'm still, I'm still uncertain whether I wanna go with the 185s or whether I wanna go with the 235s. I really am weight aware uh, with caravans. I've seen too many posts and stuff on forums where um, people have overlaid in their caravans. Uh, this does go off-road occasionally as well. I've had it lifted, certainly not an off-road van, but it does go off-road, so I need to be aware that any weight that I've got up there is higher weight. Now, I am also considering carrying another panel underneath the caravan. Uh, we'll get to that in another video, but um, what I want to do is make a bracket where I can actually slide a panel in under the caravan. It'll have protection, all that sort of stuff. I expect that panel to be around another 185 watt, give or take. Um, so that's going to give me, you know, around about the 550. 
you know what, we're going with the 180s. Uh, it's just a safer option, uh, and that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna be upset later on, but we've been safe. And what I'm thinking is, there's rigidity down here. Originally what I was thinking was going across like this, um, and having that go out, these would run down the center of the caravan. But what I really should do is use the rigidity uh, of this cross piece. Uh, so if we go like that, and follow the length of them, these will still go across ways, uh, across the van. You can still space them out, which is what I intend to do to average that weight out over the whole roof. And it's just gonna be that much more solid, so I think we'll go like that. So what I'm gonna do is gonna lay the panels out and uh, we'll get some of this aluminium across it. And so if we can't start making up this frame. And as you can see, these are just that much easier to handle as well, from a weight perspective. I just realised another good point with this. If I was going to be running these beams across, similar to what you see there now, ah, get off, bloody dog. I would really only have two mounting points, uh, unless I wanted to go straight across the top, which is what I was kind of planning. So I would have had to make my own holes there. But what we're going to do is we're going to line up something along these lines, and then what I'll be able to do is actually mount it in multiple places uh, like this uh, so that will be good now I was also considering this sort of mount um, and then sort of tapping through here and then tapping through the side of the aluminium uh, into the panel here uh, and bolting it up that way then all the weight of the panel is going to be supported by these bolts which are just going through like that um, where if I put it on top like that the actual weight of the solar panel is going to be uh, what's actually providing the strength uh, and the weight support here by coming uh, sort of down through the down through the aluminium rather than it being on the side and there being sort of a uh, you know weight on all those bolts. Instead of the bolts now supporting the weight, the aluminium will support the weight and the bolts will just be there to hold it on. Now I've just realised that the cuts they've given me were meant to be in thirds. They're not quite in thirds. They're close enough. About to pilot these holes and uh, we'll get that done. This is my trusty 18 volt super cheap tool pro uh, drill, which I sent it to me for the purpose of review. Uh, review up there in the top left hand corner, right hand corner in your case. We're pressing this into duty right now. Safety first, price is on. So I'm glad I bought extra of these. I wasn't intending to, I was just going to buy just enough. Um, so if I've got a tip for you, Buy some extra just in case. I usually buy at least one extra packet than I need because uh, I've got a habit of dropping nuts and stuff like that and then I've got to go rummaging or driving back to go and get that. Buy another packet for the lost nut. So I just buy extra now. That one in. Oh, perfect. length uh, we've just barely got enough to get that nut on so uh, yeah definitely gonna have to go with Loctite on those it's ratchet spinners um, when I originally picked these up I got them quite a while ago and they've been in the car ever since I used to think these were a bit of a gimmick but I've got to tell you there is some times when just your normal ratchet just isn't uh, I don't know as easy so if you get a chance grab yourself a set of these little ratchet spinners um, they're pretty cheap uh, again you know it might come from super cheap as a lot of my stuff does uh, not promoting them just saying that that's where they come from uh, I've been you know I've had these set for probably 10 years uh, and they're still going strong they get a lot of use but I've got to tell you when you need them they bloody come in handy I still recommend keeping an old school set though because uh, sometimes you just need to lean on these things uh, and I probably wouldn't lean on the ratchet set as hard uh, as I would with, with a you know single piece um, you know open spanner. So anyway, but these ratchet ones pretty handy. Okay, so the good news is our hole seems to line up. So we're just going to lay these across and uh, bolt them up basically. And again, 
This is the easy part of the job. We've still got to figure out how to actually get this mounted to the roof. I'm not sure which option I want to choose just yet. We'll figure that out once we get on top of the roof and we start to have a look. So we're going to have to cut down some of this tree. I'm going to have to move that caravan forward and cut down some of that because it's starting to rest on the caravan. Okay, so that's one down. We'll pop it up and you can have a look at it. Ooh, it's getting warm today. That is our one solar panel done. Right, so that's the support cross pieces, I suppose. As you can see, there is our nut and bolt. And we're going to have four of those on each side, so eight each holding down the panels. We're going to run and swap all the uh, MC4s, I think they are, out for our Anderson plugs. That was because I was using these sort of portable type scenario, but now we're fitting these, I'm going to leave these on. I had some issues with the MC4s, uh, so I'm not going back to those, going to stick with Anderson's. Uh, it's easy to swap them out if I need to. Here's the specs on our solar panel. Uh, so they're open circuit at 45 volts, that's fairly high voltage. We will be wiring these in parallel to give us our best chance uh, of getting some sort of current out of these if we are in you know a partly shaded area and I've seen that seems to work well we've got the MPPT controller uh, so we can handle the high level input my MPPT controller can handle up to 100 volt input so we could put these in series if we want uh, but I prefer to avoid you know getting up around the 100 volts if I can that around about the 36 40 odd volts coming into the MPPT controller is enough for me and that higher voltage allows me to run some thinner wire or bit that I've got still some thick gauge stuff but if I wanted to at that higher voltage um, I could run some thinner wire and avoid voltage drop because we've got that voltage coming through. Uh, 3640 volts uh, is what we're going to be seeing coming into the battery give or take uh, or coming into the controller and obviously our MPPT controller is going to be converting that additional voltage over to additional current uh, and that'll work quite well. So the aluminium I've got will run the full length of the van, so literally all the way down the side there on both sides. That's going to provide support and structure to the rooftop as well. I know it's a little bit of overkill, weight is negligible for the aluminium, so it doesn't really matter. I know it fits along that roof line, I don't, worry, I don't have to worry about cutting it down. It's an aluminium roof, so we don't have any issues with the two different metals there at all. Uh, so it really should be pretty straightforward. And it's going to be easy for me just to lay that up pop the solar panels up and then start drilling holes. The problem that I've got is that it's easier to reach in its down position. As you can see, it's in its down position. I am a short fella, five foot four. Uh, so in its down position, it's gonna be easy to work with. Certainly easier for me to mark some holes and stuff. When it gets around to drilling, I'm gonna to need to pop that up because if I have it in that down position, some of the skirt is squeezed in under there and there's every chance that I'm gonna drill through that skirt, which we don't want. Um, obviously. We'll lay it all up, uh, get it marked up, and then we'll start drilling some holes. Hmm. Uh, as far as the wiring goes, I'm not going to do anything permanent. For now, it's just going to be plug in the Anderson plug uh, when I pull up or when I'm at camp. It's not going to be running whilst I'm driving because I have the Ridge Rider Anderson DC, 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 DC charger which is charging up the battery bank uh, whilst I'm driving. It's a 20 amp, so I'll probably go with a higher one now that I've stuck the extra battery in for the purpose of the, uh, the fridge, but I will get around to doing some sort of a permanent install of the wiring. But at this point, I'm just trying to get solar panels on the roof uh, so they can run the fridge when I'm parked up. And of course, the Ridge Rider DC-DC charger uh, and the fridge install, yeah, link up the top, or in the description down below. Okay. Two solar panels down. <laughs> okay, so that's it. Um, so we've done all those. Gonna jump up on the roof now. We're gonna take up the length of aluminium and we'll lay it down the side. We'll just see whether that's gonna fit in the ridge along the side, uh, the actual awning there that we've got to work with. So let's go and have a look at that.
We are just going to go in and we're going to pop up that roof uh, so we can get that skirt out of the way. We don't want to be drilling holes while that skirt's under there in case we drill into it. So we'll pop that roof and we'll start having a look at drilling holes into those, those side bars there. Definitely a bit of extra weight up there. Tell you that for nothing. Done will be easy because I'm already standing up. Uh, that one's a bit hard on the bed. If you've never done a pop top on a caravan before and put it up, a little bit of advice, leave your door open. If you can, just a little bit like that. Or have your windows open. Because what happens is you're trying to push it up and you're trying to expand the internals of the caravan. Uh, and it becomes like a vacuum effectively and it holds onto that roof There is a little hole on the side that lets that air escape and obviously if you've got a few windows open That helps as well, but just crack your windows Leave your door open or just the screen uh, works as well. Just something to let some air in Because when you start pushing on that If you haven't got those open it sucks in real tight and it makes it even harder Just checking the roof nothing seems to be out of the ordinary now I've always had this little bit of a bow here, which I'm just, just got to fix up those staples. You can see the roof is good. We don't have any bowing in particular. Nothing that we didn't already have before. Those are locked in. I've just sprayed some ants because the little buggers have decided to make it at home. And you can see we need to fix those struts. You can see it's got a lean from front to back. Uh, so that's part of the reason we're going to uh, fix those struts. I've got a feeling these struts here at the front, which are around about there somewhere, uh, aren't doing their job. Whilst I'm under here, uh, just to give you an idea of the lip of where we are going to screw in, just up under there. I am just paying attention to where, can't really see it too well here, where we've got our piece of aluminium sticking out over the top there, and what's underneath it, because the ones at the back, almost directly above uh, the mounting brackets for those struts there, so I need to make an adjustment, probably be a little bit closer, uh, just to make sure that we're not drilling in just above that so yeah so we don't have any issues with bolts touching anything like that cross piece if we go under there we are pretty close to directly above where that strut is so we need to make some adjustments here Ooh, okay so to give you an idea what the plan is from here we've got the solar panels up on the roof we've got the rails on we've popped the top we're just about ready to start drilling i'm gonna make some adjustments to the locations uh, of the panels, uh, so we're not coming out straight above those struts. We're going to come to the outside of those struts because I'm just thinking those struts are going to go up and lay horizontal like that. Now, if I go on the inside of those struts, it's quite possible that when that strut comes up, that might make contact with our little bolts. Um, it's unlikely. Uh, because of how flush this is going to be and there is clearance actually I'm not going to need to worry about that I'm just having a look at the clearance that those are going to have uh, when they go up and I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue I might do it just in case uh, it doesn't hurt to be safe because uh, if I start drilling holes in this thing and I get those wrong and I have to go and drill again I'm not going to be happy actually what I've decided in the first instance is I am going to go and bolt those two lengths down they'll be my first holes I'm not going to worry about getting those panels screwed down through that. Uh, so that's going to hold them in place so they're not shifting and moving around on me. And now what I'm also going to squirt on each of the holes uh, is some of this uh, liquid mastic, I suppose you call it. It says it's a skin forming corking compound. It is black, unfortunately I bought the wrong colour. Um, but I have used this on other parts of the van. And I'm uh, doing an Anderson plug that's going to be on the outside of the vehicle. Um, what I actually do is squirt some of this into the rear of the Anderson plug and that pretty much creates a a watertight seal. You're not pulling it apart, uh, if you are you're going to get a hell of a mess, um, but this is the stuff that I use from there. So what I'm going to do is actually go and do the holes at the front first, because that's the one we kind of want sitting flush with the front of the caravan, uh, and then we'll worry about coming and lining it up, getting this back one done, and then we'll get those solar panels fitted and aligned, so we're not hitting those uh, struts. Go pro time. Yeah, Get that down. Uh, that might work. He's going to hold it in place. Yep. 
Okay, good morning. It's the next day. Uh, I think you saw where we left it at uh, with the solar panels basically on. We've done the four corners as far as bolting down those two pieces of aluminium that are running down the ridge line. What we need to do today is just get back up, uh, make sure we've got the solar panels roughly where we want them, drill down through both of the pieces. Drill the holes down for where we want to actually mount the panels. Uh, just screw through those and we're just going to go around and add some of this mastic that I referred to earlier. There's not too much concern with this because it is on the outside of the skirt. So if we get any leaks, it's, all, it's not actually going to come inside of the caravan. It might create an annoying drip though. And if you're anything like me, I hate drips. Um, if I've got a drip inside the window or outside the window or something like that, quite often it can stop me sleeping. So uh, I will be going around and hitting it with this stuff just to make sure. And look, it's not bad practice anyway. Okay, so the challenge here is going to be figuring out how I'm going to get my arm up under the Warning here, it should be okay, just reach the bottom of that bolt and still be at the top, uh, trying to tighten it up. See how we go. Absolutely caned me. So, alright, so that's that side done. That's good news, I'm over that. Uh, piece of cake to go around to the other side. We don't have any awning, so it's just a case of, just a case of tapping the drills and uh, dropping in the bolts. Good times. Drink first, sir. This is not going to be the travel setup as far as this goes. These will get disconnected and I'll somehow mount those to the poles so we can just plug them in individually so we can separate them if we need to for whatever reason, unlikely. Uh, we'll make another double adapter. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, and then later on we'll worry about getting some sort of a permanent connection uh, for uh, when we're traveling, but not really required at this stage. And here's the help. He's sitting there and enjoying himself in the sun. Hey, buddy. I go with me and tuck. Wow. Are you good? All right. So there. So that is roughly that. Uh, you can see we've got those fairly flush with the front section there. We do have some overhang down the side there. Although I'll attend to that or not, I don't know. I'm going to put some plastic caps in the end of all of these uh, in the front. I don't have enough to do the back. Uh, that'll cap those off, stop any moisture or something getting in there. You can see, we definitely need to get those stronger struts because you can see we've got some bowing uh, in the skirt there. So it's not up as high as it should be. You can see particularly from this side, especially there, it does sort of lean to the back a little as well. So I think those front struts uh, need replacing. So we're going to do all four. Now I think these are a 200. Um, don't quote me, I think I saw a 200 on them, which is basically 20 kilo per corner. That's how it works. If they're a 200 N rating uh, for pressure or weight, I guess, uh, then you drop that last zero off and that's what you got as far as how much weight they can actually hold or support. It's really hard to see the markings. I could be wrong there. The ones I've got coming are 430s, so I may have uh, gone a little bit high there. Probably could have gone with a 330s. Uh, but anyway, we'll see how that goes and hopefully it won't cause us too much issues, but and hopefully it's going to fit. So, providing that they look like they're a fit, we'll get that done sometime this week, I hope, and we'll show you how to do that as well. Okay, uh, that is us for the weekend. Uh, I'm working on the rock tamer for the back of the car. Uh, I need to cut some more rubber on that, so that'll be a video coming up uh, sometime, hopefully soon. Depends on how can I even get that rubber cut to paint the backside. Uh, but that's pretty much the caravan done. 
What I do need to do is go around at some point and get some slightly longer bolts so I can get those spring washers on. Uh, I'm probably I'm not going to be really happy until I get that done, but I've got a few trips away, but we're not going off-road, so I don't really need to be too concerned about that. Plus, when I've tightened it right up, the aluminium of the square tube has squeezed in a little bit, so there's going to be a bit of back pressure on that, which in theory should hold those nuts in place, stop them backing off. Uh, but as you can see, we've got six bolts down either side, so I'm pretty confident those aren't going anywhere. Now, one of the things I need to do is knock up a new double adapter. This probably isn't going to be wired in a permanent configuration. Uh, I expect that I'm just going to have an Anderson plug coming off the pop top. When it's stationary at home, it'll be plugged in, and then when I pull up at camp, it'll be plugged in. The Ridge Rider DC-DC charger taking responsibility of the charging duties uh, whilst I'm on the road and topping the batteries up, but I don't expect to be heading away for a camp uh, without those batteries already being topped up, whether it be just relying on the solar panels uh, or whether I've got it plugged in overnight to make sure they are Mickey Mouse before we head off because that fridge is going to be running the whole time we're driving. So providing I leave with topped up batteries, uh, the fridge is only going to be taking about 4 amps give or take and that's when it's cycling and that DC-DC charge is putting in 20 amps into the battery. I do need to consider that 20 amp DC-DC charger was probably enough for the one battery, 130 amp. But now that we've got 260 in there, I might need to consider options as far as getting something that'll probably put in, you know, 40, 45, 50, something around that range. Uh, but we'll worry about that later on. I think there's projector, C-Tech, stuff like that. I think they've got ones around that sort of 50 amp range. Realistically, I'd have no concerns about just slapping in uh, a new DC-DC charger and the wiring being able to keep up. I always like to, uh, I guess, do a little bit of overkill when it comes to wiring and stuff like that in the caravan just a safety thing uh, and you know obviously it also helps to future proof your installs as well. I'm going to get up and give those panels a quick clean now but at this stage we are done. So thanks for stopping by for this one, um, it's been hard work, it's been hot, uh, I am glad it's done and uh, I'm going to get on to some other things here now. Now, if you've got any questions or any comments you want to do, um, just stick them down below. Uh, happy to hear from you. Interested in any of the techniques you've used for uh, mounting up on the roof of a pop top? There was one of the guys on the Grey Nomads forum. I apologise, mate. I can't remember your name. So I'll be going back and reviewing that input that he provided me and uh, seeing whether that's applicable to our install here. I'm also going to go and knock up a, uh, a double adapter as well with slightly longer extensions. And then what I'm going to do is each of those solar panels, I'm going to screw their Anderson plug down into the actual aluminium frame there. It'll be easy enough just to pull up, plug them in, plug it into my feed point under the caravan, and then jobs are good. And, um, and we're creating electricity. So there you go. Um, again, thanks very much for uh, all the subscribers that come on board. Uh, hopefully I'm gonna keep up with the Pajero stuff, the caravan stuff. In two weeks, I'm heading away with Steve from Mud Ducks Touring. Uh, I think they're somewhere, which will be to the Blue Mountains. I'm gonna go and do the Genelon Caves, uh, Glowworm Tunnels, and then go and check out the Lost City, I think. Not sure how four-wheel drive heavy this trip is going to be. It's going to be exploratory, call it a recce, and uh, we might get stuck in some four-wheel drive stuff. And if we do, I'll grab some footage, and then it'll be there as well. Looking forward to that. Uh, very, very excited. Uh, got a four-day weekend. Never done the Genelon Caves, never done the tunnels. Um, so if you've got any recommendations on which caves to check out, we're only going to be doing one, uh, and I'm thinking about the River Cave. Get in touch, leave some comments, chuck us a subscription, Chuck us a damn thumb if that's what you feel like. Anyway, appreciate your views, appreciate your subscriptions of course. The channel's coming along nicely and I always appreciate it. I really do appreciate comments and feedback uh, down the bottom. If you think there's anything I can be doing better, uh, certainly let me know. If there's something in particular you want to see, um, I'm happy to have a crack at that as well. There you go. Thanks very much guys. We'll catch you on the next one. It is hot.